In this video, I'm going to talk about a particular design pattern named Singleton Pattern in JavaScript. Now, as per my knowledge, there are a bunch of design patterns in JavaScript. As far as I know, more than 15 plus design patterns are there and each of them have evolved along with the web. So as the web kept on improving over the years or changing over the years, these new design patterns also started to get introduced along with it. And each of them most certainly have something new to teach which can definitely improve your way of coding and it's up to you to understand which which one you would prefer like which pattern you would prefer and then structure parts of your code along that so if you're really interested to learn about design patterns then if this video performs well i'll definitely create a series explaining all those 15 or more than 15 design patterns in a very simplified manner so yeah if you find this video interesting don't forget to like it in the end and also do subscribe the channel if you find the content interesting all right so now let's jump into the design pattern we are going to talk in this video which is nothing but the singleton pattern so singleton pattern is mostly oriented to classes in javascript and it's still important to know because there are many different patterns in javascript so if you get to know this pattern then it's going to add a new concept in your mind which is going to help you ultimately choose amongst all the different patterns that you learn so it's important that you learn each of them and this pattern is also going to teach you a lot of efficient techniques while working with classes in javascript and even if you're someone who doesn't work with class you should see this video because i'm going to use very simple and basic concepts of classes but you're going to understand why this singleton pattern helps improve the usage of classes in different ways. So what is a singleton pattern? A singleton pattern is basically a way to ensure that only one instance of a particular class is created throughout your application. It is useful when you want to have a single point of access to that object. So basically, let's say generally when you create an object in JavaScript, and I'm not talking about this kind of object. I'm not talking about this object. I'm talking about the object that we create from classes. Don't worry, I'll give you an example of that to help you understand things much better, even if you couldn't understand the definition I gave you. So basically what singleton pattern says is it wants object to have a single point of access, meaning that if you have a particular object, you should not create it over and over again. You should just have one instance of it. And even if that object is supposed to be used across multiple different files by importing that object, then that object should not be created again and again. So it should be instantiated only once it should be there only once and we should keep reusing it so it should be like a global object so to help you understand this better i'm going to show you an example that you see on the screen and what i'm going to do first is i'm not going to utilize singleton pattern in this example to show you the problems that we face without it and then i'm going to implement singleton pattern to help you understand how it solves our issues so here we have a counter defined over here on top and then we are creating a class named counter and in that class we have a few methods so the few methods over here are pretty basic which is get instance which returns nothing but the instance of this counter which is the this key Word. so this within the class will always refer to that instance which is the counter in this case so whenever we create an object from this class this will refer to that object which is nothing but the counter object so the this keyword is pretty self-explanatory and then we have a get current count which returns us the current value of the counter an increment counter which increments the counter and a decrement counter which decrements the counter and over here we have two variables named counter one and counter two they are utilizing the new keyword which means that they are creating an object from this class from the counter class so counter one is an object counter two is also an object and each of these objects they include all these methods all right because they are an instance of this class the counter class an instance is nothing but the object they're an object of this class so in this case we are not using singleton pattern and the problem without singleton pattern is when i console log counter one dot get instance triple equals to counter two dot get instance it means that we are trying to compare both these objects we are trying to compare and see if both these object instances are equal or not so we are trying to check that did we create multiple objects which have the same information within them so if i open the console you can see we get false so this means that even though these two objects have the same properties within them and have been created from this same class they are still not equal that's because they have been instantiated differently right counter 2 has been instantiated differently counter 1 has also been instantiated differently which means that they have a different point of occurrence counter 1 is a different occurrence counter 2 is also a different occurrence 
So this is obviously a problem. Because we are creating multiple instances of the same object, it means we are taking up more memory space, which is obviously not good. So this is where singleton pattern comes into the picture. It's a good way to globalize everything and keep one source of truth. So singleton pattern basically follows the concept where for this class, any object that you create, it should be created only once. It should be created or instantiated only once, taking up less memory space. And all the files that decide to utilize this object by importing this object into their file will all utilize that same instance or the same object of that class, allowing some sort of a global state management. So to show you how singleton pattern can solve this, I can first go to the top and I can declare another variable and I'll call it, let's say, instance. Now what I'll do next is I'll first create a constructor over here. And if you don't know what a constructor is, a constructor basically enables you to provide any sort of custom initialization that must be done before any other methods can be called in an object, right? So before any of these methods can be called, a constructor will help you initialize any other properties before any of the other methods are called while the object is being created. So in the constructor itself, which runs first in the class, I will do something which will allow only one instance for this counter class to be created no matter how many times we create an object out of it so what i'll do is i'll do a very simple check i'll first equate instance to nothing but this this is nothing but the instance of this class and over here i'll check if instance already exists then you can simply return and if you want before returning you can just add a console log of instance already exists cannot create a new one so now whenever I create an object, it's first going to go to this constructor. It's going to see if this instance has anything. When I create the first ever object, it's going to see that the instance is empty. So instance is going to be equal to this. And since we are not returning, so we can go into all the different methods. All right. But the moment I create another object out of that same class, it's going to go to the constructor again. And then it's going to see that instance already exists because the instance is a global variable over here. And it was already assigned a value when the first object was created. So when we create the second time, it's going to see that yes, instance exists and it's going to return out of this entire constructor. So the constructor won't even allow an initialization. So the object won't be created. Now to demonstrate demonstrate that well you can already see this console log error coming but i'll first just remove this console log over here and then i'll also just clear this now i'll just try to refresh so you can see it says instance already exists cannot create a new one and it said that when the counter 2 was trying to be initialized because as soon as i remove this the counter 2 and then i try to refresh you'll see we don't get any of that error because the instance here in this case is created for the first and the last time so it obviously doesn't go to this part and the object successfully initializes all the other methods and the object is ultimately created so this will allow you to save a lot of memory space. So now the benefit of this is if I export this counter, the counter one, which is an object now, and I try to use it in different files, I will always be referencing to this particular object. I'm not creating any new instances and I'm always going to refer to this particular object across different files. So all those files using this particular object, the counter one object will refer to this same object and that will allow it to preserve a global pattern, basically somewhat like a global state. And now I'm going to show you an example by exporting this counter one object so that different files can utilize this counter one object. And those different files can utilize the methods in the counter one object, such as the decrement, increment, get current. They can utilize those methods and change the value of this counter. The value of this counter will always be global throughout all those files. So basically, because we're instantiating it once, no matter in how many files I import this object, if I try to utilize this object's methods and increment or decrement the counter, the value of this counter is going to remain the same throughout all those files, which will prove that we have actually instantiated this object once and all those files have a global state maintained with this counter variable. So just to show you that, what I'll do next is I'll replace this counter one equals to new counter with something like this. So here you can see I'm creating a new variable called singleton counter and I'm assigning it to object freeze and then new counter. So this is obviously just creating the object from this class 
from the counter class like we were doing before but i'm utilizing object.freeze with it since we're exporting this object now i do not want the other files to be able to modify the values of this object so because i want things to be more secure i don't want the other files which will import this singleton counter i don't want those files to be able to add any new properties or modify the properties of this counter object and so on so this is just an extra level of security then i'm exporting this singleton counter so the singleton counter is now nothing but an object which contains all these methods now i just renamed this index.js to counter.js and then if i open the file structure i pasted some files so you can see a few files over here blue button.js counter.js index red button styles and index.html so what i'm doing is over here in the browser you can see two buttons red and blue if i go to the index.html we have two buttons red and blue and we are adding a script which is referring to the index.js and the red and blue have two ids red and blue respectively now in the red button.js i'm doing something very simple i'm just getting the reference to the red button from the html and then upon clicking the red button i'm utilizing the counter which we are importing on top over here so this is nothing but the singleton counter from the counter.js file that we are exporting so i'm just naming it as counter over here but this counter is nothing but the object which contains all those increment counter decrement counter method and so on so i'm importing that object over here and i'm utilizing that object's method over here on click of the red button so on click of the red button the increment counter method should be called and then i'm just console logging the counter dot get current count so clicking on the red button should increase this global counter value by utilizing this method the method of the object and similarly in the blue button i'm doing the exact same thing by getting the reference of the blue button and then incrementing and console logging the value and lastly in index.js i'm simply importing red and blue button because the index has been referenced over here in the script if i import red and blue over here all of the contents of red and blue button will end up being visible on the browser so now to prove that the object has been instantiated once and the counter variable here is global what should happen is if i click on red or blue button no matter which button from which file i click the counter should keep incrementing since i'm incrementing in both the files over here increment counter and increment counter here whichever button i click the counter should keep incrementing from its last previous value so it should not start from zero it should always keep incrementing from its previous value if that happens then it means that the counter value is indeed global being accessed by both the files so if i click on red button we get a counter total of one if i click on blue button you see we get a counter total of two so it did not start from zero it started from the last previous value which means this blue button which was clicked second is also referring to this counter variable over here and the same state of that counter value is being preserved across both the files so if i click on red button again it goes to three if i click on blue button again the latest value becomes four so this proves that this counter class that that we have over here is being instantiated only once over here and then we can import it in as many files as we want and we can utilize that object's methods to increment decrement or just perform any operation but it's always going to make sure that there is only one instantiation and the variable updates globally everywhere persisting that same value throughout every file so that is basically what the singleton pattern says that there should be a single source of truth and the classes should be instantiated once and can be accessed globally this single instance can be shared throughout our application which makes singletons great for managing global state in an application so that is all what singleton pattern means so singletons are obviously helpful because they just allow one instantiation to happen which could potentially save a lot of memory space however the thing is in javascript we do not actually need to utilize this pattern as much mostly because in other programming languages like java or c++ we cannot create an object directly so basically what i mean is we cannot do this in other programming languages like if i name this obj1 equals to this and then i can just directly export obj1 right so instead of creating that class and an object from that class we can just directly do something like this so because this is possible in javascript we do not necessarily need to use the singleton pattern but other programming languages do not have that feature to directly create an object so they have to create class which creates an object and then that created object has the value of the instance of the class and then that object is used in different files just as we used it in our case but this would become a bit overkill in javascript because we can directly create objects in javascript the way i showed you to achieve the exact same result so we do not necessarily need to use it in javascript 
Now one thing to remember in singleton pattern is you need to be extremely careful while using this more like you need to remember which file has this singleton pattern which in our case is the counter.js file because since this is going to be imported across different files and those different files access the same counter state so we do not want to by mistakenly import this counter object in some other files and increment the value which could change the values in all the other files because we know any changes made in one file will affect the singleton state and those changes will be visible in other parts of your application. So be very careful while importing this and remember that in any file you change the state of the counter it will also affect that counter state for all the other files. So import it only when you need it and you are sure that all of these files require the same data to be displayed across them. The main issue in singleton is that the order of execution is very important and that is something you kind of have to remember or more like you have to understand the flow of data when using a global state like we are doing for the counter variable in this case because if you don't understand the flow of data then things can get very tricky as your application grows and many components start to rely on each other because then you could get confused at which file is trying to change this counter and then things could get quite messy because a lot of things depend on each other so that is one important thing you need to keep in mind now obviously if you're not using classes you do not at all require to do this you can do all of this simply using the normal object so to quickly convert this in javascript into a very simplified approach without using classes i can start by just removing this instance then over here i will let's say name this to count this time then i'll create an object which is going to be very simple in javascript this will have nothing but the same increment counter method and all this is going to do is that it's going to return plus plus count similarly i'm going to say decrement counter and i'm going to return minus minus count and then i can remove this entire class which we don't require anymore there you go i can also remove this const singleton counter and then in object.freeze we don't need new counter anymore because we are not using classes i can directly pass counter we are freezing the counter object and i can simply export the counter object and i'll just keep this capitalized of course this should also be capitalized now in the other files i'll just add the curly braces over here and i'll do the same in red button.js as well all right and then one more thing is we are also doing counter dot get current count right we did not create this method in our object so i'll just create that and i'll return nothing but the count value all right so now the red and blue button should be able to log things properly because you have the get current count method added as well by just refresh and i click on red button i get counter total one on blue button I get the counter total as 2 which means it works perfectly fine and the global state is preserved. No matter how many times I click, it keeps increasing the right way. So without classes, it's of course way more easier, way simple to read and understand. But as I mentioned in the beginning that the singleton pattern is more oriented towards classes and the example I showed you is exactly how we utilize it with classes. So even though it's not that prevalent at the moment, but if you decide to ever use that pattern and require global state management in any manner, then this pattern can be pretty useful in saving your memory space by creating less instantiations and maintaining the global state throughout. So this is all about the singleton pattern in JavaScript. There are many more different patterns which are even better as per recent web standards. If you want me to make a video on all those patterns, then definitely like this video and comment if you're interested in me continuing this series as well. So if you like the video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. And as usual, stay tuned for more.